Hey badminton community, it is Jeff and Henry here from Volant and the Badminton Podcast. Welcome to episode number seven of the Tokyo 2020 show. We are bringing you the latest results, our news, our polls, predictions, expectations, all of those things on this show. So thank you for tuning in. Henry, what are you doing? I'm trying to find the men's single seeds that just didn't show up last night. They did not show up at all, did they? No. I thought it was going to be business as usual, but last night it was an emotional roller coaster. And to be honest, when my motor was down 1920 and he hit that net tape, I felt like vomiting. <sighs> We've got to move on, man. We've just got to move on. But how? Did, what about Kevin Cordon? Smashed his way through in Kai Long Angus. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even put his racket on it. Mm -hmm. Side Praneeth, where was he? Chou Ten Chen, he was playing a, not to lose. He had a close one against Brian. Almost, almost lost that, that one. Yep. Yeah. Wang Zhu Wei, three set. To be honest, Nat Nguyen did, did challenge him. Gave, him. gave him a tough three set. Christy, where was he? Yeah, where didn't he? play that well either. Ken, no. Ken Yu played really well. He, he took did. the match really pretty much to him, but yeah, he didn't play the best he could. And he, he mentioned that in his interviews afterwards as well. So yep. it's... No. We have to move on. Oh, now you got me all emotional. I don't think I can cope. How did Kento lose to, in straight sets last night? I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. I, I, I wish, I wish I could tell you why, why he lost last night. But uh, in, I guess in, in his own words, post match after losing to Hyo Kwang Hee, 15 21, 19 21, he said, "I'm sorry, I could not fulfil all the expectations that people had of me. It's hard for me to deal with this. I was trying to be aggressive, but I couldn't stay strong emotionally." That hits home. Right? It, those words mean so much. Like I've never been in a position ever that I've been thought to win an Olympic gold medal, but I have been in a situation where I've been expected to win matches and that expectation can be debilitating. And we see it, the world's best player. We've seen him play in the world stage, world championships, all these events where there's heaps of pressure, but this one got the better of him, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and we saw that in the way that he was playing. His, mm. his movement was a bit stiff wasn't as fluid as it's nor it normally is. Um, his control at the net, just the touch just wasn't quite there either. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Hyo, kudos to him. He, he, brought, really well. he brought an A-class He was so game. aggressive. Mm. He was taking all the chances. No pressure, of course, on his mm. side. But he played, his attacking game was phenomenal as yeah. well. So no credit away from him whatsoever. Mm. But we are very much Kento Momoto fans, as many of you are watching. And we do feel disappointed, but we do want to support Kento. We, we do love you still. We love you, Momo. We still respect you, and we really want to see you come back stronger from this. But it is very much heartfelt yeah. from our perspective. And I think when, when Momo first became world number one, there was a period where I think the, the his he wasn't as emotionally strong. Um, he didn't have the confidence. He didn't feel like he was the world number one for a period of time. Um, and I think he kind of needed those the consistent international tournaments to kind of remind himself that he that, is that, that he is player. that good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we do, yeah, we do wish him all the best. He did have, of course, his injury uh, as well as getting COVID, but he did say physically, physically he was, was fine. okay. Yeah. Um, but, but emotionally, yeah, I think. it's a big, it's a big weight to lift on his shoulders. So, yeah. but we we do have to move we on do. here. We do, we do have yeah. to move on. Um, we do have some other unfortunate news though. We mm. have to cover uh, Zhang Beiwen, USA. She was up. She, she, she won the first mm -hmm. set. She was down by a couple of points in the second, but playing really, really well. Mm. And she sustained an Achilles tendon injury. And yeah, did, that's awful. Like, it, yeah. The, when she moved back and then she just held held that leg. Yeah, when she, yeah, she just fell on the ground, held that leg and the wheelchair yeah. came out. And of course she was in tears because mm. she's funded, she's had a crowdfunding experience to just get to Tokyo. Mm. The hardship she's had to face. So really feel for her as well. Yeah. But oh, all right, okay. got it. I think we have to we have to do have to talk one more, one more, one more yep. news, one more unfortunate event, mm. uh, which was 
so were Yik and Aaron Shear. They showed up. They showed they up. They played really they well. Really like, showed up this we've, been, we've been saying how if so were Yik can take control of that front court and dominate and not make those errors, mm. then they're going to be really dangerous, which he did. But Aaron played so well. They rotated so well. They were challenging in the midcourt. They were so early. Kevin and Marcus were just under so much pressure the whole time. Mm. Of course, the service fault probably didn't help no. with the emotions and everything happening 16, in the moment. 15. In the second set after oh. losing the first. But yeah. Look, the Malaysians played awesome. Yeah, um, I don't really think did. the Minions played anywhere near as they could, as well as we've seen them play. Mm. But just another upset, number one seed. What's going on in Tokyo 2020? It's crazy. All the top seeds. Yeah. Where are they? It's yeah. absolutely crazy. This is what can happen in Olympics, right? Yeah, exactly. But now I guess the the pressure falls on to Hendra and Asan, who yep. who just won their their match this morning, mm -hmm. um, as well. But uh, again. You know, who knows how they're going to go under yeah. the pressure when they move into, I guess, well, semi the semis, semi-finals, and, and maybe the gold medal match. So, well, they did come overcome the pressure when um, Kevin and Marcus lost early in the World Championships 2019. They went mm. to win it, um, did the daddies. So maybe they can do it again. But I'm sure they would have preferred to have some compatriots in the draw with them. Yeah, but not yeah. this time. Um, in other news, mm. mixed doubles semi-finals, um, Watanabe Higashino versus Huang Dongping, Wang Yi Lu. Yeah. They did lose that in three sets. How did you see that one? Look, first one was really good. We could see Watanabe really being able to find those gaps and really slowing down that Chinese, the Chinese pair's play because they really love that fast Driving game. And they, fast yeah, game, yeah. They didn't really give them the opportunity to do that in the first game, but there was a slight adjustment after the first set when the Chinese lost and mm. Wang Yi Lu really took control of that mid-court position. He also covered that back forehand position where he's normally under a lot of pressure and doesn't play so well in. Uh, and from there, it was just... Attack, just attack, attack right? Attack. The, yeah. the Japanese were just under defense the whole time. Mm. And probably out of the two, of course, Arisa's defense isn't as strong as Yuta's. So she mm. got pretty, a lot of under, a lot of pressure in the, the defense there. And then in the third set, they mm. just kept it going. Like, yeah. I think they, they just played them out of their game. Um, yeah. Yuta was making some errors we don't usually make, see him make. Mm. And at the end of the day, that, that third set being 21-14, pretty comfortable set for the Chinese. So they played really well. Yeah. Of course, that means we are going into an all-Chinese final because yeah. in the other semi-final, we did have Zheng Siwei, uh, Huang Yaqiong beat Tang Chung Man, uh, Seeing Sui. Yeah. Straight yeah. sets. Uh, that was probably more straightforward. The yeah. Hong Kong pair did have some good um, stages where they were able to make a few points in a row. But then yeah. at the end of the After day... After that mid-game interval in, in that second set, they, they managed to get the attack on. Yeah. Um, but you would think they would because they were so far behind that they could play so freely. Yeah. Um, and then I think um, the, the, the Huang Yachong and, and Jung Suwei just switched, yeah, switched back it on. back on. Too far ahead and yeah. 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 So we are going into that all Chinese final. Head-to-head -head mm. at the moment is 13-2 yeah. to Suwei and uh, Yachong. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens mm. there. But I would probably agree with that. Um, mm. I think they've got the mental advantage, so I would say gold for uh, those. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, gold yeah, for gold. for those uh, for, for Jensei Jensei Wei, Wei, Huang, Yachong. Yachong. Yeah, yeah. The st statistics say a lot there, and uh, Yachong, I think, is just too fast, yeah. too fast at the net. Um, they're, 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 I, don't, I don't think they're going to be challenged. Um, it's going to be an epic match. It's going to be it's super be fast. fast, so fast. Uh, but I think at the at the end of the rally, Yachong and Siwei will, will most likely be winning them. Yeah, and yeah. I think this does answer the question: How are the Chinese going to be at the Tokyo Games? Yeah, they're, they're going they're, so well. They're, they're, they're dominating, amazing. especially in this mixed doubles. Yeah. So let's move on. We have got Mads Christofferson, a men's singles player from Denmark, who was training with Victor Axelsen and. Anders Andersen Daily. in the yeah, every single day in the weeks mm. leading up towards the 2020 Tokyo Games. And he's number 71 in the world himself. So let's hear from him as to how the preparation for the Danes looked like. So Mads, how has the training preparation been like for Anders and Victor in the in the weeks preceding the Olympics? Uh, they have been uh, tough. It has been some uh, some uh, tough practicing. Uh, it's have been uh, a lot of uh, physical based, and uh, we have all, uh, also uh, played a bit. But that was more like when we came uh, closer to the Olympics, then uh, we played a uh, a bit more against the guys. Um, the preparation has been has been like uh, they have been. Uh, Doing the exercises and then uh, the other men singles, they have the 
been shifting, like they have going and uh, feeding a bit, and then they have uh, uh, on the other court next to uh, the Olympic court, they have uh, been yeah trying to uh, practicing what they have to practice. Uh, so we have been like uh, in and out on the court at the Olympics. So there was a fresh feeder inside uh, uh, the Olympic court, uh, like on the Olympic court. So uh, we could uh, really uh, set a high pace and uh, yeah, try to do uh, the best for uh, Victor and Anders. But uh, yeah, it, it, it has been uh, some tough practices uh, for, for Victor and Anders. So uh, they, are, they are in good shape, <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely seem that way, especially Axelsson yesterday night when we saw him dispatch. Um, who was it that he played last night? Oh, from Finland. From Finland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Cole, Cole John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cole John yeah. is who we played from Finland last night. And um, yeah, really just dispatched him. He just seemed so strong, so physically fit. Yeah. Um, and, and I think when we think about Axelsson and Antonsen, is that I guess it is with the, the Danish Danish team in general, is that they are quite fun loving uh, and quite yeah. community vibe, especially with, with fans out there as well. Um, so, what in yeah. terms of the, those two players and their personalities and how they prepare. Is it, do they prepare any differently? Well, you know how Anas is uh, on his social media and how Victor is on his social media. That's actually a quite good like example of how they are. Uh, I don't think that they are like their approach is uh, not that different, but still it's different because of their personality so it can, it may seem a little bit more like loose and fun for Anas but it's also so serious so it's uh, on a level as uh, Victor uh, there is yeah there is nothing uh, uh, con uh, how can you say it? Uh, there's nothing um, there is uh, not according to the plan for, for both of them so uh, it's 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 really serious for both uh, both of them but yeah uh, maybe Anas is a little bit more joking and stuff like that but that's also just because he's uh, how he is but it's more it's mostly off court when we are not practicing when we are on court it's still like really serious uh, and the same with Victor uh, but you can also joke with uh, with Vita uh, after the practice and stuff like that. So I don't think that it, it has been uh, so uh, differently. Uh, so yeah, they are just like two really professional uh, athletes, and you can feel that, and I I could feel that this uh, uh, period. It's the first time I have been uh, with the like an, in an Olympic uh, practice. So that was also uh, fun for me and. Yeah, just to see how the guys were, yeah, doing at every practice. That was uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they have definitely come through their rounds quite strongly, and I don't think either of them have lost a set yet either. So, compared to some of the other top seeds that we are seeing lose, such as Kenta Momota, for the men's singles mm -hmm. event, has your prediction for the the gold medal changed since this this has happened? Well, um. I have, I have, I hope that uh, Victor and Anas is uh, doing well, of course. Um, but I don't know if my prediction has changed. Uh, I I thought that Kento and Victor was going to meet each other, and then I actually thought that uh, Victor would win because, yeah, he has been uh, really good at practice uh, the last couple of weeks and. Uh, and I didn't know what uh, how, how Kento was, but I could also imagine that there was this um, really high amount of pressure, a uh, big amount of pressure because it's in Japan and stuff like that. Uh, and I also uh, uh, thought back on uh, uh, Thailand, where Vita was just dominating. And there was also like this uh, long period of practice up to uh, Thailand and then he was just in really good shape and uh, you could just feel that he has been uh, pre prepared for this uh, these tournaments and 
I just felt that there, it was the same this time uh, with Vita, so I just, yeah. But I, I still think it's uh, gonna be, uh, yeah. There is still so many good men singles players left, so it's it's still uh, quite open. And it it, I don't think it would surprise me if uh, I don't know, Jonathan Christie or. Uh, I don't know what uh, Shiyuki and Shenlong is coming uh, with either because you haven't seen them for so long. Uh, so that's also going to be, a, yeah, I would say Shenlong against uh, Lee C. Jia today. They are playing today, right? Or have they played? No, they they are playing today later on. That's going to be a, an interesting uh, matchup uh, for sure. So uh, yeah, and that will also tell us a bit more where uh, the. Uh, those players are, uh, yeah. Now it's now uh, Victor and Anas is also getting tested uh, with the opponents they have. So, yeah, I think maybe Anas was a bit uh, luckier because he has uh, he's going to play against Toby Pettinsey, uh, and I think that's that should be uh, okay. Um, yeah. 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 I think the, the the round of sixteen are definitely going to. Uh, really test some of these uh, higher high level players and will really be able to see or gauge their standards. So definitely looking yeah. forward to those matches. Yeah. So Henry, we've got some match play starting at 5 p.m. local time, Tokyo mm -hmm. time. Um, we do have the men's singles round of 16, yep. as well as the women's doubles quarterfinals. We mm -hmm. did cover a lot of the women's doubles quarterfinals yesterday in, yes, in yesterday's show. So that's episode six of the Tokyo 2020 show. So if you are interested in seeing what we think about those matchups, make sure you do check it out um, in the in, on Facebook or on YouTube because mm -hmm. they'll be there for you to listen to. But let's get into the men's singles. Yeah, round of sixteen. They're awesome matches. We're gonna have to only pick one because exactly. there's too many. You to don't want to miss any of them. But <laughs> if we had to choose one, Jeff, which one would you choose? Zijia versus Chen Long. Yeah. I would say um, that is at seven fifteen local time. Zijia, we we talked about him maybe being a little bit under pressure with Brees. At the mm. start of the first set, it was for the first yeah. five points or so. But then, when Brees was just coming out, charging at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but just too strong. Like that yeah. around the head, he can hit that from anywhere and it's smash just cracking, the, yeah, cracking cross-court smash. Yeah. Like, even it's when just Brees, so spontaneous as well. It's yeah. just like, last how second, do you hit that? Bam. Yeah. And then even if Brees is waiting, it's, the quality's too good, he still can't even get it. Yeah. So he played awesome last night and Chen Long was Chen Long. Mm. He's, he's just a machine, like he's stable, solid, that defense. He, he had some long rallies with uh, Pablo Abian from Spain mm. last night, but he's looking really he's looking solid. solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's looking like the Chen Long that we've seen in the past. I mean, Chen Long typically brings Chen Long, but yeah, yeah. It, it is the kind of, I feel he's probably about 80, 90% of what he was when he won the gold. Um, mm -hmm. Just, so, just general, 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 general thoughts on, on how he's, he's looking. So I think that's going to be a pretty epic match. Yeah. Yeah. So back to back Olympics, do you think maybe for him? I'm not sure. I think, you know, with, with the history between Malaysia and China in the Olympics, of course, with Lin Dan and Chong Wei, I think this is kind of like a redemption match. Um, mm. Although, a very different player in Zijia yep. compared, to, Chong compared to Chong Wei, but mm. uh, I actually see Zijia winning this one. So do I. Yeah. I see that attack coming through. I know that Chen Long's defence is really good, but Zijia's attack is has been really solid. His net play has been really mm. good yesterday to set that up. Yeah. So I think Zijia for this one as well. And he also has that kind of form where he can keep up with Chen Long on those long rallies mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so. that fitness as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So let's move on to tomorrow morning, Henry. Mm. Uh, we have the mixed doubles bronze medal match, of course. Yuta Watanabe, Arisa Higashino versus Tanjiman Seeing Sweat, mm. Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, who are your picks for that? They've just come off losses today. Mm. What are Look, your thoughts? I think Watanabe and Higashino are still going to be a bit too strong uh, for the Hong Kong pair. The Hong Kong pair have already made history, Olympic history for, for the country. Um, I'm from Hong Kong, so um, you know, I <laughs> love, would, love, would love for them to win. Uh, but I just don't see that that happening uh, unless, of course, they are able to take advantage of Higashino's defence. Um, but Higashino, if, if they can get Higashino to the front, it's game over. Mm. I, I think, if, yeah, I yeah. think the Japanese will have a very comfortable 
time if, if he just you know, can get to the front court. Yeah, okay. I, I think so as well. I'm not going to disagree for that one, Henry. I do think Yuta and Arisa will win that bronze medal match. But that's to say we have predicted quite a few things at these Olympics and been completely wrong. Unpredictable. Um, <laughs> Everything's unpredictable. <laughs> so, so but yeah, we'll see how that goes. That is tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And then we do have women's women singles quarterfinals matches mm. and of course there are so many of those to choose from but what's your pick as to do not miss i would say rachinok intanon and tai Su Ying. Mm -hmm. they have a was it 15 14 head to head they played each other so many times <laughs> 29 it's ridiculous. games together yeah. in their decade long you know history more than decade um but it, yeah i I think it's going to be an epic game because I think the last three matches, all of them went to three sets. Mm -hmm. um, tai Su Ying just won the last one uh, uh, at, at the World Tour Finals 2020. Um, so I, I actually think Ratchnock's going to take this one just because she's she's had that shock at the Olympics already when she played Sonia Chia. She, she, almost, she lost. almost lost that one. Yeah. yeah. So she's kind of shocked into peak performance. The challenge is whether or not she can keep up with the fitness mm. that comes with playing Tyson. And you look at the last, uh, the, the match that you referred to, mm. that last set was 21-9 in the third. Mm. So obviously there's probably some fitness happening there, whether she can keep up. I'm gonna go with Tyson Ying, mm. just because I think that she's, I think that she's playing really well, but she hasn't had that that test or that scare, like you said, like against Sonia Chow, mm. which we saw Ratchanok that played her into form. She played a lot better today mm. in her, her match. Uh, who did she play? She, um, she played Tunjung. Yes, yes, she played Tunjung from Indonesia. Sorry, mm. yep, mm -hmm. yep. And I think she played a lot better in that match as well. So I'm going to go Tai Si Ying, um, mm. but I do think that Ratchanok could potentially do something. But Tai yeah. Si Ying for me. Yep, no, that, that's fair enough. Um, so, well, make sure you do not miss those matches that we just talked about, guys. But if you can watch them all, watch them all. Okay? Absolutely. Yep, so now we're moving on to our poll. So, look. Yesterday we, we released a poll of name the player in the image. You'll see that on screen right now. So the, the answers uh, to choose from was A, Baywen Jung, B, Akane Yamaguchi, C, Michelle Lee, and D, Kim Ga Un. And your responses actually gave a tight, tight contest between Baywen Jung uh, as well as Michelle Lee. Uh, you actually gave in more than 10,000 responses. And the percentage for Baywen Jung was 31.3%. Uh, versus Michelle Lee at 30.6%. But the answer is, it is Michelle Lee from Canada. So uh, Baywen actually commented on one of those one of those votes in the poll and she said, so where's my tattoo? So if it's me, where's my tattoo? So that could have given it away because there's yeah. no tattoo. She does have a tattoo on her shoulder. Um, so that was Michelle Lee. But for today, we do have another secret sound for you. So if you have a listen now, who is this? women's doubles player. So our options are A, Shin, Shin Sung Chan from Korea, B, Stephanie Stiova from Stoeva. Stoeva. <laughs> I've got my name mixed up. Yeah. Stephanie Stoeva from Bulgaria, uh, Chinese Jia Yifan is C, and D is Wakana Nagahara. So put your choices or your votes in now. So now it is razor racket time, and it probably goes to say that I am feeling, I'm feeling better after talking about the other matches, but I'm mm. still quite emotional about Kento's loss. I'm a huge Kento fan. So I am going to raise my racket to Kento Momoda. Look, Jeff, I think today I want to do two razor rackets just because I, you know, we talked about it earlier. Baywen Jung, she cracked a joke with, with, the, um, with the poll. Uh, but after that joke, unfortunately, she had a very unfortunate event. And, you know, we wish her all the best. We wish her a smooth recovery and hope, hoping to see her back on court as soon as possible. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to raise mine to Baywen Jung. So Kento, come back stronger. Same with Baywen. Baywen, um, you're both awesome. So raise a racket to you both. So just as a friendly reminder, we are a go at 5 p.m. local time for the matches. So that's one hour earlier than normal in Tokyo. So 5 p.m. tonight, and then we start again at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So if you are still looking out for where to watch or stay up to date, then make sure you check the URLs that are on the screen right now. You've got the match center, you've got the, uh, the live blog, and then you've also got the places that you can watch. All right, so 
Thanks everyone for tuning into episode seven of the Tokyo 2020 show. We hope you're enjoying the Olympics coverage. I know there are some big disappointments that come with the Olympics and the unpredictability of some of the results of these matches. So please still enjoy uh, as we will try to as well. See you tomorrow. See ya.